Zephyr Hat client has been officially discontinued, which means it's a lot harder to use, but still not impossible. So today I'm going to show you how to use it despite 1.20.30 already being out. Now the first part where it's already difficult is the actual download because that has also been removed. So to do that, you want to join my Discord server called Client. This is going to be linked somewhere near the top of the description probably together with actually my main Discord server. Anyways, if you join this one, you want to head over to the Zephyr channel which should be at the top of the Bedrock section over here which is where you will actually find the download which is definitely pretty cool. You can just download it through here. Once you've downloaded that, you should be all good. Now, as I said, Zephyr has been officially discontinued, which means it's not going to get updated anymore, which means it doesn't actually work for the current game version. That means we need to downgrade. So you want to get yourself a Minecraft Bedrock Launcher. This is going to allow us to downgrade. It's a really, really useful tool in general. Anyways, this website is obviously going to be linked in the description, just like many things. And you want to click on this green download button over here. Then you want to click on OK on this pop-up. Basically, what it means is that this is not cracked Minecraft. You actually need to own Minecraft Bedrock Edition to be able to use this. Now, as you can see, my downloads, I have the two things we need, the Bedrock Launcher setup as well as Ambrosial. Now, before we continue, I recommend that you actually back up your Minecraft worlds because they might actually disappear. There is a fix to the disappearing Minecraft worlds. Um, I will link a video in the description if you need the fix for that. Um, however, it's easier just to back them up. That way you don't need to fix it and you can just use the worlds either way. Um, backing up your worlds is definitely something I recommend. Anyways, so we'll start off with the Bedrock Launcher setup. Just double click on that and it should automatically extract itself just like so and you should be left with this Bedrock Launcher folder. In here there's going to be four things and you want to click on the start bedrock launcher.exe. That is going to open up this and it's automatically going to start installing. You'll be greeted with this welcome screen and then you can click on next then on next once again, and then create a profile. As well as optionally choose an account. This is something you don't actually have to do for it to work. Then click on finish, and um, as you can see, we are good. Now, as I said, Zephyr doesn't work for the latest version. So what you want to do is go over to installations. Also, yes, if you can see, then you'll have noticed that this looks a lot like the Java Edition Launcher, and that's basically what it is. It's a copy of the Minecraft Java Edition Launcher for Bedrock Edition, so it's really, really nice. You want to click on this new installation button over here, and you can call this anything you want. I'll call it, for example, Zephyr, because that's what we're going to be using it for. The version that you want to select for this is you're going to have to scroll down a little bit, 1.19.70.2. That is the one you want, right? Then you want to click on this create button right over here. And as you can see, we got the version in there right now. So now in this play menu, we can select that version and click on play. Now, the first time that you play with this, it is going to need to quickly download something. But don't worry, that won't ever have to happen again. Beautiful. Once we've done all that, as you can see, Minecraft 1.19.70 has now opened and we are actually able to play. So in our downloads to Ambrosial right over here. Also, by the way, these are this well, this one is just the setup, so you can delete that if you want. Um, anyways, Ambrosial right over here. Um, you can open it up and this error is actually always going to come up once again because it's been discontinued, all that stuff. Kind of annoying. You just want to click on OK, and then you want to click on Yes when that comes up. Then right over here, as you can see, it's going to open up just like we know it should. We can close this now. Anyways, uh, here you want to choose the top version of Zephyr, which as you can see is that one right over there. And then you want to click on Launch. Now, as you can see, it has automatically launched into Minecraft, which is great. If you clicked on launch and it worked, then you were incredibly lucky. But what if it didn't work? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it right now. Since you want to once again go over to my Discord server, um, the same one where you downloaded the Zephyr launcher, and here you want to go to the Zephyr-DLL channel. And here you'll be able to find 
at this point three DLLs. I hope it can become more in the future. Um, anyways, you want to select the 1.19.71 because that's the one we're using. Um, if you want it for other versions, then you can download those, but you just really want to download the 1.19.71. Great, as you can see, it's in my downloads over here. Now we actually need to put this into Zephyr. So make sure you have the 1.19.70 selected. Then click on this folder button over here. Once you're there, you want to right click, go to new folder and create a folder called 4.42. Um, just like that, make sure that there are no spaces or anything like that. Make sure it is exactly 4.42. Then you want to open that and inside you want to put this DLL file right over there. Perfect. Now that's done. You can close both of these folders. And now when you click on launch, as you can see, it is going to inject. So now if that does still not work, you can once again go into this folder, go into the 4.42 folder you just made, and then rename this DLL file to project-halcyon.dll. Make sure that it is spelled P-R-O-J-E-C-T-H-A-L-C-Y-O-N. That is exactly how you want it to be spelt. And that's really the last thing you can do. You rename it to that and you launch. As you can see, it works. Now alternatively, something else you can do is use a program like Fade Injector. And with this injector, as you can see, I have selected the, um, the DLL file I have downloaded from my Discord. And like that, I can inject it right into Minecraft. Anyways, those were basically all the ways on how to make it work. If it still isn't working, please join the Discord, send me screenshots, and I will help you fix it. So here it is, up and ready and working. As you can see, we can even head into any world. Um, as you can see, I, I, I only had one world anyways, but it's gone now. Um, if that happened to you, don't worry. They're still actually on your device. You just need to retrieve them. Um, as I've said, I have tutorial for that if you want that linked in the description. And otherwise, um, you know, you should have backed up your worlds, as I've said. And then you won't even need to retrieve them. And you'll just be able to get them back by re-importing them. Anyways, just quickly loading into a world over here as you can see and I'll quickly show you how to use this. So to open up the menu you want to press on the insert key and then you're gonna as you can see get all of these things. Now I recommend that you move them around a little try and get them slightly organized at least. There we go for uh, as much as that fits. You right click on them and then all of these open up. Now as you can see there isn't really enough space but oh well Actually, that seems to be quite fine. As you can see, you can also scroll. So, um, all these RGB highlighted ones, those are going to, um, those are actually enabled, and all the other ones are not. To enable them, literally just click on them and you're good. If you hover above these, there's automatically going to be a little description type thing, and you can actually also right click on these, and then what you see is going to happen is that you can choose a, from a little bit of a menu you know um, select some custom things if that is what you wish customize each hack slightly um, now what you'll also see is that on this screen there is some watermarks and stuff those are automatically enabled um, you can click on all these not the click GUI one um, as you can see watermark one as well turn all that off and that is actually going to remove those from your screen, right? Clicking on the click GUI is going to close it or just click on the insert key again to close the hack menu up as well. Now I do actually have an incredibly detailed tutorial on exactly how to use this and all the ins and outs of the client, which is going to be linked down in the description for you guys. Um, this was just really, really brief on quickly how to use this and it should definitely get you started. Anyways, for right now though, that was basically it. If you do have any more questions, then feel free to leave those down in the comments below. For right now, thank you ever so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.